Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now, Nigeria's 36 states debt rose to 11.4 trillion naira by June 2024, a 14.57% increase from December 2023. Despite increased internal generated revenue, IGR, and Federal Accounts Allocation Committee FAC allocations, external debts also grew due to naira devaluation. States increasingly rely on FAC allocations, with 32 states depending on it for at least 55% of their revenue. Budget recommends that states enhance internal revenue generation, digitize tax systems, and reduce dependency on federal transfers for fiscal sustainability. Now, joining us to unravel this and make sense of what this is about is Shegun Shekwito. He's a principal partner at Woodridge and Scott Consulting. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Good morning, right, good sir. morning. So we're looking at the debt um, that has risen so much. 11 um, trillion naira is a whole lot of money. And of course, these states depend on uh, the FAC allocations. In fact, they get a lot of money. And one question that we've always asked is why are they not generating their own revenue and sending it to the federal? So sending it to the center instead of always um, being the ones that have to take from the center. But even with that, they're still owing so much money. I want to get your take on this. The fact that most states in Nigeria depend solely or almost fully on, um, you know, FAC allocations and then we're, they're still owing so much money to the tune of 11 trillion naira. And in just six months. Well, yeah, uh, it, it just shows the, you know, the, the problem that we've, we've we all kind of know we have uh, with our subnational government in Nigeria, which is uh, the issue of solvency and um, viability. Um, a lot of these states are simply economically or, well, um, financially non-viable. Um, their, their expenses and their costs are more, more or less are more than um, their revenues. Uh, th there was a recent uh, report um, that I saw somewhere uh, comparing um, the total governor's office budget uh, to their FAC allocation. And you'll be shocked to find that majority of the states in Nigeria actually budget have um, budgets that are running in some cases, well over a hundred percent of their government office, governor's office budget, more than their FAC allocation. Um, I think in the particular case of, uh, I think it's Kogi State, um, uh, running at about one hundred and forty-three percent. You know, in other words, their total FAC allocation for um, the year for each year um, was spent entirely on funding the governor's office. Uh, that's how dire the problem is. Before you then begin to talk about, you know, civil service, uh, salaries for civil servants, uh, before you can talk about overheads, uh, you know, uh, running costs, cost of petrol, you know, powering the offices and all of that. And then before you can talk about development spending, capital expenses. Um, so you find that uh, truly uh, <laughs> the situation that we have in our states are are very dire so of course what that would automatically mean is that if you then don't have igr to to to, to augment or support what you get from your fac allocation then you'd have to borrow and and i think that's that's what you're just seeing uh play out in this report is the fact that most of these states actually do sustain themselves just you know from borrowing sometimes some of them even go as far as borrowing from you know foreign loans, taking foreign loans to fund projects um, um, just just to just to stay afloat. So yeah, so it's a big problem and it's something that we really should all be concerned about and begin to look for solutions for. Now when you say some of these states sustain themselves from money that they get from the federal allocation, it will now sound like the federal allocation is not even enough. And that is why when they use that to fund, let's say, the, the office of the governor, they need to go out and borrow. 
is this really the case? So that nobody will misunderstand that you are saying that the money is not enough, that's why they need to go out. Is this money that they get from the federal allocation not enough to do a lot of things in their states without necessarily having to borrow as much as they are borrowing? Yeah, I, I mean, that, I, I guess that's what, that's what it means. Um, it means that the, the FAC allocation on its own is insufficient to run the business of government in those in majority of the states in Nigeria. It's just simply insufficient. So if, if we say it's not enough, that's not necessarily saying that the FAC allocation is too small. It's just saying that the entire revenue profile is too small relative to their, you know, their budgets. You know their annual budgets and and their, their expense expenditure budgets and expense profile. Uh, if if you are spending the entirety of your FAC allocation on just running the government's office alone, then you know you, you can imagine what that would mean um, yeah, for for the fiscal uh, from the point of view of fiscal responsibility. You know, so you could argue that well, is it that the FAC allocation is not enough, or should perhaps such states um be trimming their expenses you know i mean why should you be spending all of your fac allocation not to talk of borrowing more mm. um uh, on, on just the government's office so if you know that your fac allocation is as small as it is two billion you know ten billion five billion in some cases um can't can't these states reduce you know some luxuries can't they reduce some of the things that you know, uh, uh, that that money is funding in the governor's office. Um, can't we talk about some sort of civil service reforms in some of these states so that they can manage their recurrent expenditure down aggressively and uh, see how much money they can then have left to pursue capital projects that will, that will drive development um, activities in their in their respective states. So, mm. but, but Mr. Yeah, Mr. Shokweton, the, is Mr. Shokweton the question yeah. is, are they really spending the money? Because if they were spending the money on luxury on the governor's office, it's even a different case from the fact that maybe this money is entering where we do not know. Mm. That's the thing. So my question that bugs me all the time is that if the federal government gives so much money, X, Y, Z, amount of money to the state governments, what is that instrument which looks into or monitors how this money is spent and why is it that this instrument has not been able to expose these state governors of frivolous spending? Because the average Nigerian believes that the money doesn't even go to the things that they say they are doing. Mm. I mean, look, we, we all know the problems that we have with um, uh, um, corruption, uh, with, with things like kickback, uh, contract inflation, over invoicing, you know, and all of the different tricks that um gets played in the civil service uh, to to basically pillage the treasury uh the issue is a lot of these things you're unable to prove it because uh the 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 instruments like you say you know the instruments of accountability um simply don't work they're ineffective because nobody pursues them there are no strong institutions to ensure that you know um, those provisions for accountability are followed to the letter for example, um, um, the, you know, uh, the annual audits that are supposed to take place of the accounts of each state, the publishing of the accounts of each state that should happen um, uh, by the Auditor General's office for, for those states, they rarely ever happen, uh, you know, in, in many, of, many of the states in Nigeria. Um, accountability, open governance structures and frameworks, a lot of states have signed up for the open governance uh, uh, projects in partnership with um, some international multilateral development agencies like the United Nations, you know, and all of that. But but they simply don't stick. They don't adhere, you know, to these provisions. So at the end of the day, even institutions like um, the EFCC that are supposed to uh, pursue corruption and ensure that people remain accountable, it, it just it just doesn't happen. You know, we, we a fantastic example is what we have in Kogi State. Um, uh, where the governor, you know, we all know the popular case, where 82 billion there, um, you know, mind-boggling figure. That's um, a, a significant chunk of the entire FAC allocation for a year. Went into funding, you know, just the governor's personal lives, so children's school fees, you know, and all of that. And as we speak now, 
you know, the state has not been able to arrest him. He's got immunity uh, by proxy, <laughs> which is a completely new and uh, strange thing uh, as far as our laws are concerned. So, you know, you've got cases like that, and there's very little that anybody can do. So I, as long as these accountability structures are failing, then um, people are going to make away with these monies, and uh, very little is going to happen thereafter. Mm. Okay, so you, there was something you mentioned that you said most of these states, they budget more than their FAC allocation. And I'm just thinking of this as a business person. You cannot have a business and you want to spend way more than you are making. And of course, if you're going to be dependent on something like a FAC allocation, you should be looking for ways to generate your own revenue. Isn't it at this point that, aside the corruption that we understand, you know, has ravaged and has a huge um, part to play here, but isn't this the point where the governors, the state governors, maybe just like legal states now, um, look for ways to start to generate their own revenue and ensure that there's development in their state? Because, of course, if there's good development in your state, you're making more money and the whole Nigeria, imagine each of, each, each of the states doing that, then the whole of Nigeria will obviously benefit from from it so what are we supposed to be doing right now what are the state governors supposed to be doing right now to generate more revenue so that they are not spending more than they're getting well the answer to that is that we we've, we've got to reverse the revenue and management um, system of the country hmm. um, where it's a case of resources are exploited at the states usually by the federal government or its agencies the revenues accruing from those resources are gathered at the center and then shared down down the ladder you know down the hierarchy uh, that's it's a misnomer it's an aberration it's an abnormality and uh, it, as a result of that that arrangement um creativity innovation productivity in particular have been killed um, you know the spirit of those 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 vitis, <laughs> so to speak, have been killed. You know, in the state over the decades as a result of this aberration, this topsy-turvy arrangement, because it's supposed to be the other way around. Every other place where they practice federalism, uh, the way we claim to, it's the other way around. All of the federated federating units have almost complete in fact it is actually 100 percent control over their resources generate revenues therefrom and then contribute monies to the center for the administrative um activities that the center um uh, carries out on behalf of the federation you know so but in nigeria is the opposite so of course people are not um, motivated to actually be productive the the, the resources the vast resources the vast potential that exists in this country can never be exploited as long as the federal government that sits in Abuja um, is the one overseeing, uh, you know, uh, the development and the exploitation of those resources. It's just not going to happen. It's too much work for one unit, the federal government, you know, at the center to carry out. You know, the federal government is sitting in Abuja. You are going to exploit gold in Zamfara. You are going to exploit gold in Oshun State. Just think about the geographical distance of that alone before you talk about, you know, the oil, you know, in, in, in the Niger Delta, the coal in Enugu, uh, you know, in the plateau region, in the Middle Belt, all sorts of incredible, incredibly valuable uh, um, uh, solid minerals. You know, the federal government alone can't do it. So we've got to take the bull by the horn and have a conversation around how to manage these resources from the states and then let the state contribute money to the center. Until we do that, you know, the state governments are just going to gather in Abuja every month like they currently do. They're going mm -hmm. to collect their FAC allocation and they're going to go and, you know, basically blow it and wait for the next month. I mean, look, as a salary and we all know what, what happens. You, you wait for the end of the month and then you take the salary. You have already most salary earners, no matter how large your salary might be, whether you're a bank manager or a bank executive, oil and gas, telecoms, usually those salaries are gone. A, a significant chunk of it is already gone into loans before you collect the salary. So you, you actually run into catch up with, with you know, with your, it's a rat race for your finances. It's exactly the same thing that has happened 
you know, with, with the way we manage our public finances in the country. They just wait for the end of each month, collect the money, blow it, and then wait for the next month. So we've got to talk about that as a country. We're serious about actually growing our productivity and our revenue base, and especially developmental activities across the entire country. That means <laughs> the talk around constitutional amendment will be very difficult because the federal government wants to keep on exploiting uh, the resources of the state. The state governors and government, they just want to keep doing what they are doing lazy and just about and going, going with cap in hand to collect mm -hmm. what they are collecting and lazying about. Some of them go for seminars outside the country and it's, it's really funny. So how do we start pushing this agenda of uh, constitutional amendment? Because even when they talk about constitutional amendment, they don't, not much is talked about um, making our country a, a true federalism, into a true federal government as we've been calling ourselves. So I don't know how we can start pushing the narrative because it seems as if we have not spoken about it enough. I mean, invariably, well, you know, this is the politics of the economics. And um, uh, you can't have economic policy without dealing with the politics that will drive you know, those policies and the politics that will ensure that those policies either get formulated or even get implemented. Um, so in this case now, um, I think that the politics is not looking very good because, like you say, there is absolutely zero incentive from the major parties that can make this happen to change the state of and take something um, significant to shift this. You know, so, so as an example, I, I always find it you know, almost impossible to have a conversation about the economy of Nigeria without eventually dovetailing into the subsidy you know, and the exchange rate management issue. If the country was running um, you know, the other way around, like we say, if, if, if we are running a true fiscal federalism, then I think that the issue of subsidies may not really have become such a large uh, problem. It would be a problem. But it won't be a problem that you are saying is crippling your country. It's preventing your country from maintaining just its debt service obligations alone, not to talk about um, other developmental expenditure that you're supposed to spend money on every year. Um, you know, the I think the point is that the potential at the state level is literally limitless, you know, in terms of the various things that can happen. Uh, whether you talk about tourism, whether you talk about the, the creative industry, the arts, the culture, the kind of money that you can make from those, those things and drive foreign exchange earnings, you know, through those things, is simply mind-boggling. So one would have thought that that would be adequate motivation for the political side of things to align, but because of the corruption problem, it's not going to happen. Um, so at the end of the day, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I really don't know, you know how to solve this, uh, mm -hmm. because it, at the end of the day, it's, it's going to come down to the Nigerian people and what we want and how we want it, how badly we want it, how badly we're willing to push for those things and uh, to drive change. Mm. I, love, I love the fact that you said, um, you know, it's up to us to ensure that we want to drive the change. And um, you, still, you also spoke, spoke about, you know, the potentials that these states have. So what are some realistic um, ways you think these states can be financially independent and you know you know just even a self-sufficient for themselves and everyone what are some things that maybe a few key points that you think we need to start doing at the moment look the low-hanging fruit women the low-hanging fruits lagos has shown the way mm. um those of us that live in Lagos might not like it, <laughs> but it's mm -hmm. working for Lagos. And and look, the truth of the matter is that no matter what you might, your opinion might be about how well Lagos is working, it's still the best state by a mile and a half, you know, when you compare it with any other state in this country, yeah. in terms of infrastructure, in terms of, you know, the road networks, uh, you know, whatever indicator you want to use. Uh, so Lagos has shown the way you have to drive internally generated revenue. I think this is the low-hanging fruit. Majority of these states don't even collect taxes. They don't collect simple payee that falls within their jurisdiction. They're not collecting it as aggressively as you find states like Lagos and Rivers and Ogun State uh, do. 
Uh, so, so the low hanging fruit for me is if you say what can they do is to simply engage the expertise required. If they don't have it internally, then they should engage it. Um, you know, outsource it and generate revenues. Just collect taxes for goodness sake. Companies income tax, you know, payee and uh, uh, land use charge. There are a lot of tax categories that are um, uh, the under the direct purview and jurisdiction of the state governments. Can they um, develop the framework to more efficiently and effectively collect these taxes before you can then start talking about ramping up the productivity within their states, um, exploiting the resources within their states to, to, to drive growth of the state, the GDP and the growth of businesses, growth of individuals, create wealth, which will then provide significantly more tax revenues. We're not even collecting you know, the tax available based on the current productivity level. So for me, that's a, it's a low hanging fruit. They've got to deal with their internally generated revenue structures and, and become far more effective than they are now. Some, some states, I mean, their IGR levels are ridiculously low. <laughs> you know, you are talking um, uh, less than 100 million, you know, per month. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's mind boggling how, how some states can, 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 can exist in, in such, a, such, a, such a manner. So I think that the low hanging fruit has to be um, you know, ramping up the effectiveness of, of the internet generated revenue collection <laughs> mechanisms in, in the states. I'm, I'm just curious, uh, before we wrap up, I'm curious, uh, whose fault is it that the ports all over Nigeria are not working except Lagos? Because the port in Calabar, for instance, is not working as it should work. And we have ports, you know, Port Accord, we have ports in, in some other Even states. In but, yeah, but they seem not to work. It's just Lagos that is working. And that's going, one of the things going for Lagos, uh, apart from the fact that almost every headquarter of uh, what, whatever corporation yeah. we have is in Lagos, but the ports mm -hmm. are working. What is the reason the other ports in other states of the Federation are not working? Because if do, these ports work, I'm sure the wealth will go around, at least to some extent. Whose fault is it? The governors there in those states? It, or? It, it, it's, it's the laziness. It's the laziness that we spoke about as a result of the, you know, the revenue model that this country runs, that, that is responsible for that. Because if FAC didn't exist, you know, and if FAC wasn't being used pretty much entirely to feather the nest of the governors, then the governors would have you know, uh, raised a strong... Um, uh, pressure on the federal government who, you know, are responsible for the running of those ports um, to fix them and make them work. Um, even if it would mean, for example, that you will uh, run initiatives on your own as a state to get, you know, a private capital to fix those ports. You know, you can bring some sort of partnership with the federal government, you know, a, a, a three-way PPP arena, for example, where it's the federal government, the state government, and private investors that bring money in to fix those spots and then run them on the BOT or some, whatever other model, you know, build up pre transfer uh, model of some sort. And then the revenues that accrue there from, you know that as a state, you are going to benefit from it significantly. But because FAC is there now, and mm. that's what the governors literally feed on. They're not going to do this. You, you do know that in Lagos State, as far back as the time I remember, in the time of Governor Fashola, the federal infrastructure in the state that the state considered important for driving the economy of the state, they fixed. They just fixed it. And look, that we will go into the conversation around how to recover these monies later. Let's just fix this thing. And then they did it. You know, so I think that that's got to happen um, across the country. We've got to have states taking responsibility, standing up and just not forgetting about the federal government, but mm. stop. They, they need to stop using that as an excuse for why things are not running in their states. Just fix these things, get them to work, and then sort out the financials. How do you um, fix afterwards. the pot when the federal government is supposed to do that? I'm saying this because at the time uh, when democracy just came or returned in mm. 1999, uh, we had a governor, for instance, in Cross River State who built Tinapa, a lofty project that got a lot of millions. And that Tinapa was dependent mostly on uh, the free trade zone. It was dependent on the ports working. He left government after eight years. The next governor that came throughout his eight years was trying to make sure that the ports in Calabar work. And they still are not working. Mm -hmm. So which means there are some sets of people who are thwarting uh, the... 
the progress of these ports may be so that only Lagos State uh, ports will work. That's a conspiracy theory that a lot of people are thinking, that there are some people preventing mm -hmm. this so that only Lagos uh, ports will work. So what other ways could they have passed? What can the governor, government or governors do and boycott the federal government as it is? They can't fix the ports on their own and say because it will work for us. The federal government has to give a nod. So what else can they do? Because it seems as if, well, while we blame the governors, there, is, there could be a force in the national or at the national level that is preventing this from happening. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I don't see that because I, I, I do believe that, you know, if the ports work, the federal government would also benefit significantly. Um, so I, I think it, it is the governor that we do, we will have to blame. So I, the, the cross reverse example that you gave, for example, you know, um, I guess they haven't tried hard enough. Um, when the governors want something, they get it. <laughs> I mean, we all know this. The Nigeria Governors Forum is the most powerful political force in this country. In some instances, far more powerful than the president. If they, if they come together and align and say, this is what we're going to have in this country, it will happen. Um, um, so, so if the governors really, really are intent on getting the sports to work, the sports will work. Uh, especially because these ports are not only in a few states. We've got about five or six ports scattered across other states aside from uh, from Lagos State. So um, I think it's just simply a case of the willpower, the political will to drive the conversation, to drive the, all of the initiatives that would ensure that uh, these federal resources in their states work, um, you know, pressuring the federal government enough to, to, uh, to, to, to give enough attention to those projects and ensuring that they do take off. I mean, you know, I mean, if you go to the federal government and tell them, you know what, we don't need your money. We just need your cooperation. We need you to sign, you know, whatever um, concession agreements, you know, um, guarantee, federal guarantees that may be required and all of that to secure uh, the, the funding, the private capital funding required for this project. Just sign, you know. Then if, if the federal government is, co is not cooperating, can they not come to the public? And make make the matter a public a, a public debate question. You know, these politicians know what to do when they want something. So, for me, I think it's just that they did not really wanted it bad enough, wanted it hard enough. When they do, it will happen. Mm. Okay. Well, we hope that they take the responsibility and not just lazy about that's that and wait for. That's a matter for another yeah, day. We'll still and, have to talk wait, about it and, and wait for whatever is going to be handed over to them. Because at the end of the day, IGRs definitely will play a significant role when it comes to um, you know them being self-sufficient for their state. And yeah. of course, we need grassroots development everywhere in Nigeria. Anyways, Shagun, want to say thank you so much for coming. It's always a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. Have a wonderful, Have a wonderful day. day. Have a nice yeah. day, sir. All right, so we're with Shagun Shokutan, who's the principal partner of Woodridge and Scott Consulting. And we're just looking at the debt of state governors, or rather of states um, in Nigeria, that has gone up to 11 trillion naira. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we're talking about the NLC. They've given governors December 1 ultimatum for minimum wage payment. Please stay with us.